Um, we're Art Van Graham, Amanda, this is Phil, and hey this is our little, our Art V tiny house on wheels. So we wanted to just do a conversion, and being from New York City, we had either a bus conversion, like schoolie, we could do this, we could do a tiny house, which I wanted, but being in New York City and building my mom's driveway across from the train station kind of left us not that much space. This guy came available. We thought it was a great deal. Had a billion things wrong with it. Yeah. So we decided <laughs> I was going to make the inside look as much as a tiny home as I can. And then I was going to paint the outside. And um, my friend Chelsea, she's just, she's good with details. I just get, I paint for fun. So basically I had her help with all that. And she's trying to get her art out there. So we figure we're traveling cross country. We can at least like support her and her art and music collaborative band. Honestly, um... When we first got the thing, she thought it was all good, so she started painting like right away. And then I got off of work finally after a long weekend, and I went into the bedroom, and there was a big old bubble on the wall. I cut it open, and millions of ants just rushed out at me. So I instantaneously was like, "We need to gut have, uh, all of it. I need to get rid of all these things." Um, <laughs> we started ripping walls yeah, down and we, each problem at a time. <laughs> we just ripped everything off that we could, and. Built it back up. We've been through a lot. We wanted to quit a lot. Yeah, it we was. We didn't think it was gonna make it. We thought we were gonna get a five. I think we got a bit good, solid eight out of this. We're happy with how it came out. Yeah, it definitely came out a lot better than we ever thought it could. Uh, and we're surprised we could sure. do something this awesome where we did it in New York and stuff. Uh, this is my little pride and joy. <laughs> we wanted to do a closet in the bedroom, but our bed wound up being too big because we kept a real mattress. So once we had that, I needed a closet, so I took all my clothes and I put them on a um, love seat. And whatever fit on the love seat was all that I could bring. So I kind of like used that as my guide of how much space and storage. And I have a friend who lives in a sprinter named Alex. We went to high school together, didn't know. All of a sudden he pulls up in his <laughs> tiny house and I'm like, oh my god. So he came in here and he helped um, us think tiny. So I was like, I want to build this thing, I have no idea. And he's like, I have a wood shed, I'm a carpenter, I'll teach you. I want to teach people how to build tiny as a, as a job. So I took a tiny 101, I was his uh, first subject. <laughs> he taught me how to build this, I'll climb up and show you. All of our so clothes are in here, out. and everything just uh, moves all the directions. So, And then we have all our clothes up there, extra storage here, more back there. And um, it's definitely been really helpful. This is our office, where you'll find pens and stationery out there. So, most of my clothes are on this side, actually, and the rest of it is all hers, yeah. If we ever really needed to, we could just add the extra, like, closet. Bar. Or, yeah, bar up in this corner and just make it have more. Yeah, we wanted to at least keep this one window accessible. Mm -hmm. Just have that one closed off a little bit. It was a time crunch, it was a lot of... We need to get this done, you know, quickly. It was hard to kind of like downscale and everything, so we threw a lot of things away or just got rid of a lot of things and sold things and to help us move. It was probably harder on Amanda because she had to throw away a lot of her clothes. It's kind of like really cool to start fresh. So like, get rid of all your stuff, start fresh, and you just like go out somewhere new and you become whoever you want, or you can become your own new you because you're in a different like environment. You're meeting such different people who live just lives. Like, it was hailing here, and then now it's 95, and it's going to be cold tonight. Like, you don't even yeah. have, what, do you, how many seasons do you have in a day? Like, but it's cool, because I would have never known that. Like, Alabama, Mississippi, they have a beautiful Gulf Coast of Mexico. I would have never in a million years known that if I didn't come on this trip. The South? Hot. But to answer out. your other question, there is more storage. There is more storage up here. We have more storage up here. All here is like just our RV stuff, like our paperwork, um, our different connection stuff, our everyday hoodies. Up here we have bathing suits, board games. We got shoes, hiking boots, a whole bin of shoes up here. And then I'm not going to open in here, but in here we keep all of our winter stuff because we won't need that. Well, in Colorado, apparently you do. This, however, is the table that we use to eat on every to night. Eat on. Chairs do not flip around, unfortunately. Although, multiple people have mentioned that, and now I wish that we could have done that. This one doesn't really move that much. I do most of the driving, and, I mean, besides... Backup camera. Yeah, besides me installing the backup camera, which this is the model <laughs> for it, yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. We jam all the important stuff when we're done parking in the giant little opening, you know, so people don't see all the things, and we can put the, the shade up. We usually have two. 
Yeah, so we kind of put them on each side. Just put them out so no one can see even through the side windows. We also have this uh, curtain, which does not that much, but it looks really nice. So I sit here, Bill sits here. I usually pull a pillar from the front, and I sit here, and it's pretty neat. That's why, like, having, um, having this ottoman and having this beanbag is really neat for us because they're, like, movable. So we throw them up there a lot. Uh, we can throw them in the front seat. We can kind of basically put them wherever we kind of yep. just want more space for. And we're not driving the front, the, you the know, front the front cabin part. is definitely just all storage. Like we have a piano, a keyboard we're trying yeah, to get Yeah, definitely. Stuff. We don't drive like that normally, so <laughs> it's definitely just storage. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. We pulled the thing, and besides all the other problems that we've had, um, we did buy it with only like 64,000 miles into it, which is pretty good. And besides being told by multiple people that our tires were fine, I didn't this is agree. All new. No one wanted to listen it's to it. It's very true. Amanda. She did know that it was not okay to have such old tires, and everyone was just like, it's fine. So we're like, all right, cool. It blew. One of them blew up on us in the first, first 15, 15 minutes, minutes on our trip. So then we bought all new six. And besides that, we haven't put any money in uh, mechanically. Besides, I think we got like one actual like oil inspection, and inspection and stuff. Kind of yeah, you know, the main thing that we did. So mechanical wise, definitely good. At least as far as now, we already put like 6,000 miles into it. Nice. Like close to that, so. And we got only about like probably four miles to the gallon. Yeah, I don't have an exact number for you, but I would tell you that it's a lot. We've it's made it six lot, hours on a mean. tank. Yeah, it's, it depends where we are. If we're going downhill quite some times, then yeah, maybe we do. Maybe we hit the 10, but I would say we definitely don't get any more than 10. We're usually like, all. come on, you can do it, you got this, you got yeah. this, girl, you got it, up the hill, come on! The solar batteries are not the biggest, they're, they're but they're still 50 pounds each, and we have mm. really six in total, if you want to count everything. We do have six in total, because we have one for, obviously, under the hood, the emergency backup one, and we got the four extra for solar that we have. Yeah, we have 680 watts of solar, and we have 500 amp hours. Uh, so we have five batteries that are hooked up mm -hmm. in parallel, and we we pretty much run everything, every single thing in the in the home. We can run off our solar fridge. Yes, fridge is a three-way fridge. However, our third option of 12 volt is not working, and we need that fixed. <laughs> but it runs off fine. Propane. It runs off if we're hooked up to our 30 amp service, or even if we're hooked up to with an adapter, a 15 amp adapter, just the 15 amp, 120, 10 volt, whatever. Yeah, uh, that works just as well. I did. It's a vinyl hardwood uh, click-in, so they click in. They're supposed to be waterproof. I'll be quite on. Like there, a lot of people have them in their homes that I have noticed. I have gotten tons of compliments. Yeah. On them. Most expensive thing I did in here was the floors, and they were my favorite. We didn't put enough stuff down though because we constantly had problems in here. So building. After putting the floor down, we did scratch it a lot. Um, yeah. Are you, they warranty? I don't tell. know. The sun over here, when we leave the door open coming in, will we'll kind of make it like, just like anything else, kind of movable. So yeah, but they, they snap in, but they also have a glue. So when you snap them in and you place it down, you know, it sticks and snaps in at the same time. All the heat's really doing, I guess, is in a way stretching it out a little bit and there's direct sunlight, you know? It hasn't ever been that hot in here that they just like lift it up. It's if it's direct sunlight, it gets it overheats very quickly, and the glue will separate and just lift up. We had a bunch of wires and stuff when we ripped out um, the other set with the table and stuff. So we boxed it out, and I wanted to have a purpose with it, which my friend with the tiny he anything like with this beautiful wood, um, I lacquered and then built with him. So I did all like the moldings. That one was a pain in the butt. The kitchen molding, that was a lot of <laughs> angles, and it was Tiny Building 101, so I'm in and out using that machine until I get it down that it's going to fit. <laughs> or he's like, cool, restart. So that was really neat. I got to learn how to do window frames, and I love this because I could sit here and look out the window and just drink my coffee. Or, like, I could have dinner here, or if we do a TV eventually, like, mount it somewhere, or projection screen or something like that. Yeah. And we'd have that opportunity. Thinking about making this, this could be the, the drop cloth, you know, for the projector and have it just right about here or something or so. Yeah, so this just comes up. It's just the extra counter space that we have for cooking, you know, or stoves there. And this is the extra space we have. And we can eat outside from it when it's open. Or we could technically sell something out of there if I had wanted to. Yeah, it makes no a little time. booth. <laughs> I would say it's like I brought my bar and wheels so I could just like mix drinks over here if I wanted. So, I mean, this was just like the one piece. Imagine if it were... Uh, 
you know, like lined up. This was just the one piece that we got from like Home Depot or something. Yeah, Home Depot or Lowe's, I had gotten that countertop for, and it actually was cut weird like this. Yeah, it was like this originally, and we were like, well, we're not going to just like throw this thing away. And all that was here before was just like a little handrail, you know, usually what they have. So I actually just bought these brackets. like folding shelf brackets that um, they say it holds up to like 500 pounds or something, and I thought, well, I'm never going to put 500 pounds of food on it, so it should be okay. <laughs> so yeah, that comes up, and then you just lift it up a little bit bring them in and it closes and that's it. So this is the kitchen. Here is our multi-purpose um, cutting board which is also now a display for our friend Soap and such. And though, don't look at that, don't record that, cut that one out. <laughs> well, well, we took a lunch break today. Yeah, so this is our Magic Chef stove and uh, it's only a three burner. Runs off our propane. Um, it works well, totally fine, no problems. The oven as well, it's a little small, but just works just as well. We eat out a lot, mostly because we're, this is part of our trip more so. We definitely try to make an effort to eat here more, but we went to like Austin and there's a lot of great things there, so we had to splurge a little bit. I definitely don't cook as much as I used to like at, uh, you know, back at home before I lived in this tiny home. We have plenty of space, if you can see, like literally that's empty. Or yeah. Like coffee cups, but. We have our spices up here, coffee stuff up there. We mostly do paper plates and utensils unless it's steak. We um, have magnets back here and chalkboards basically to utilize it. Some garbage and stuff. We have a good amount of space, our drawers locked. We have storage under there, which is pretty neat in there because it actually underneath the drawers, it's just nothing. Yeah. So we were able to store a lot of like knapsacks and stuff. We also this, use the oven a lot for storage as well. Yeah. For, for the like bigger pots and pans. Pans. Um, this was pretty cool. This used to be our uh, microwave, and we completely took it out and we made it for our bathroom storage. And uh, my friend helped build these and gave me these beautiful hand painted things. And then I contact papered the fridge, which the fridge is actually pretty large. This is our tiny bathroom. We originally had poly walls up that a contractor actually had thought would be a good idea and the glue from the heat melted off the walls and made bubbles so they were actually textured and all my paintings fell off so we ripped it down and we actually built this bathroom on someone's lawn and in a parking lot this week so that was pretty neat we used frp panels which were really interesting to work with so and i got to use a jigsaw a little bit more which was pretty neat getting this cut it was pretty cool that I was able to succeed and we had to do two seams because they're um, really easy to break. And then it is a full shower that we had built. We ripped out all the old ones. I tiled the floor. Um, then we wanted to not have a nature's head toilet or any of the other big leading brands that, you know, they have their money just coming in. So we wanted to support more local as much as we could. So we reached out to um, Jason for toilets for people at Makerspace in Staten Island, New York. And he made us a custom built toilet, which is really neat. I can show you. It's basically my throne, because when I sit up here, I'm pretty, I have a queen. I actually fell out of it the other day. That was pretty fun. Um, the way it works is this comes up, and it's an optional squatty potty, which is what sold us on it, because if you've never <laughs> used one of these, use it, poop, and come it back. It aligns your intestine <laughs> for. Uh... Optimum so this is cooking. like locked in and um, that's locked in when we're in motion. So when we're parked, we kind of take it out, put our squatty potty on um, and open it up, take a pee, open this up, do number two, and then it spins. On a, it's on a drum. So it will toss around all your stuff with compost or with kitty litter, whichever, we tried both now. And then that's it. Truthfully. They're both about the same. Yeah. And then once a month, or we do it quite often, there's a bottom, there's a bus tub, comes right out, and then you just tie up your blanket bag and toss it. And then the pee uh, comes back here in a jug. There's a fan back here. So it's pretty neat. It's all recyclable material. And he makes them and sends them all around the world for people. He builds them. So it's pretty cool. And he sends them in packages, so they're pretty easy to build. So that was there. Uh, this room was there already. Originally, it was a... A little shower pan here. Yeah. A toilet and a sink. Like, little, like this. Like, I could literally show you with my hands, it was about this big. A normal toilet with a black tank and everything hooked up. When uh, we were thinking about it, we both decided that we don't really want to have to deal with the black tank. 
and honestly rather basically literally just bag up our waste and just throw it in the garbage can. Which I'm happy allowed to do that. that we went with that route. Mm -hmm. I'm digging out the peas, my least favorite thing, but since I pee in here the most, it's my chore, but that's not bad. And this, um, <laughs> out of all shower heads, if you are looking to help do shout outs for people, uh, Body Spa, this Oxygenic, we tried a regular shower head that I saw most of them, the conversions that we did not like. So we had bought this and the pressure comes out real high. Uh, we have no problem with water and our water temperature. We have a water, tankless water heater, so that's pretty neat. And then this just is a full stream. So for me, like I have a lot of hair, if you see. So washing my hair is kind of hard in here. I actually use the soap that you saw over there. My friend uh, makes it. 27, 27 and a half gallon. Uh, fresh water tank, which basically equates out to really if you want to put it in these terms It's about like three showers and three very quick showers But enough to you know wash the days away and enough water to like wash dishes for another day or so before we have to fill up again and we're truly empty. It works out pretty well. AC works. Yeah, it does not run off our solar, which in honestly most anyone that has solar knows they can't really run the AC off their solar unless they go big, you know. So yeah, it only works off whether our generator is on or if we're hooked up to our 30 amp service or an adapter and in our regular house service. Um, so this is our bedroom. A really important thing for Phil and I where we did not want to hit our head. So we wanted to make sure that we would have space, but we also wanted storage. So we have a water, um, a tankless water heater, which we have mounted back there. We have access to from outside. Um, it vents it out for the propane and all. So the bed was built based off the height for that, which is actually very not that high. So after that, we brought in my mattress, which happened to be brand new, and it was way too high, and it covered my windowsill, which I'm kind of sad about. But we then added in some cool storage, which I could show you if I move that. So we have these giant deep drawers that kind of self-close, or his does. And we basically have all of our socks and underwears in here. All of them, like socks, undies, bras, which is pretty neat. We put these nice hand-painted things on. We use this to lock it. Um, if we need to access into the bed for something major, because our water tank is under there, and our batteries, and our inverter, this, we could lift the bed, lift the panels, and access from under there. Um, it's three separate panels. So if we needed to lift the mattress and access one spot, we could remove one um, panel. And here, after we got this mattress in and it wound up being bigger than me, I couldn't reach because I'm tiny. So we built this custom, like a step storage. So if you come in here, it's all of my art stuff. So it's my paint, it's my crafts. It's whatever I could fit in it is what I was able to take. And then our controller is over there for solar. And I have a cool little... Um, seat bench that I built for um, hamper and we definitely have a lot of storage all up in there so yeah especially under the bed it's yeah it's like three feet high of storage mm, and it goes right the yeah there's like an access yeah, panel from there as well um, underneath there you would pull it like push it to the side and you can also like access it as well and then I have like shelves back like in there to utilize all like the, the space that I could we have like our outdoor stuff by like the water heater so we can access it from outside and like everything like that. Like I was saying it was really neat because I can sit in here and like I won't hit my head. I custom built these. Um, Phil wanted new speakers because it sounded like music coming out of a can in here. Yeah, basically. And he wanted to mount them in the corners and I'm like, oh hell no, I learned how to build now. So <laughs> I built these. I used the jigsaw. I had a little help. I trimmed everything with this so like nothing would fall and Tacky's my best friend. 99 cents tacky. Everything is tackied for the road. And yeah, I have some dream catchers and just my jewelry that I made this uh, jewelry thing, so I just get to hang some cool stuff. Yeah, and the painting, I, I painted that for Phil. I painted that for fun. So yeah, and he has his guitar in here that he comes out and plays when he's feeling himself. So yeah, <laughs> this is our house. So now you guys checked out inside, so come out, come on outside and I'll show you around. Um, so when we had bought the van, we didn't want it to look like an RV. We wanted it to be artistic. Um, 
I'm really big on local art and supporting local art as much as I can. And I have a friend that I've been friends with since the sixth grade, Chelsea Ray. She's in the band Mercury and the Architects and she's doing a really cool like art and music collab project. So I reached out to her and I was like, hey, do you want to help me make my van pretty? She's like, yeah, stellar. So we, our uncle was really cool and um, he let us use his shop. So it took two weeks. Chelsea spent almost every day there, a couple overnighters. We helped her out. Chelsea like crushed this side of the van. Phil and I crushed the other side of the van. Chelsea went in and she did like every fine detail, use exterior paint and all that. Um, it was really neat to learn from Chelsea as well because she had like taught a lot about different like paint techniques that she taught Phil and I to help out with her design. So like Phil was over there like painting black lines on the other side and getting dizzy for days and Chelsea's over here at this flower for hours and I'm on the ladder painting the blue and black maze and we just were like dead for days for days, but we were on a time crunch and um, we had to get it done for an event we were hosting to support as much like local music, art, and makers. So we were on a time crunch, but we got it done. Chelsea slept in it for days. Yeah. Well, thanks for checking out our house. Uh, we're traveling cross country right now from the East Coast to the West, couple zigzags in between for the next three months. So make sure to follow us on Instagram at Art Van Grow, A-R-T-V-A-N-G-R-O-W. Just Check it out, follow, look at our Instagram, look at our website. We have tons of pictures of the whole remodel in here. We have videos of the art on there. We have um, her music on there. We have other up and coming artists. We have up and coming artist makers. We have some local soap that we brought from New York. We have some local art that we had kind of taken from New York City and brought here to Colorado's Tiny House Fest, which is really neat. So all the links will be in the bio. Um, our YouTube channel and all that. So make sure to check us out and thanks for checking out our rig. Yeah, thanks guys.